Hello everyone. Uh, today we will talk about a uh, theories of failure, which we all have studied in your undergraduate courses. It could be your uh, strength of materials, could be your mechanics of solids, or it could be solid mechanics. Uh, for myself, uh, my name is uh, Pushpinder. I am from IIT Delhi, and this is my email ID. If you have any question, you can always uh, send an email to me. I will definitely revert back within a couple of days. So all the theories of failure, I'll uh, go one by one. The first one is your maximum principal stress theory, given by Rankine. The second is your maximum shear stress theory, given by Triska. The third is principal strain theory by Saint-Venant. Fourth is strain energy theory, given by Higgs. The fifth is your distortion energy theory, given by von Mises. Uh, so we all are aware about these theories. Uh, the, the theory number five, your maximum distortion energy theory, this is most widely used and uh, uh, which we all are aware in your all the finite element tools, whether it is your Bacchus, it could be your Nastran or your Elizana or ANSYS. People like to take a fringe component of uh, this particular uh, entity. And I'll talk about this in next couple of minutes. That why this is uh, uh, more important compared to other four. The first one, the maximum principal uh, stress theory, the Rankine, he says that whenever the, uh, the maximum principal stress developed in the component coming from your three dimensional uh, loading becomes greater than or equal to your material yield stress coming from your simple uh, tension test then the material will uh, fail so we have a, a component here and uh, it fails something like this all right which is roughly uh, nothing but a 90 degree to your uh, application of your uh, load all right, so the equation becomes roughly uh, in this particular fashion. Sigma 1 is greater than or equal to your uh, sigma y. It is also needless to mention that here I am assuming the material to be your uh, uh, brittle. For uh, ductile material, uh, the plane of failure is roughly at uh, 45 degree and it's not at 90 degree as I have shown here. For a ductile material, it will it will roughly at this particular fashion. And here for the brittle material, as you can see that roughly it is at 90 degree to your direction of the uh, di direction of loading, which is at uh, here. All right. Uh, also, needless to mention that this is applicable only for your brittle material. This particular theory, since they are weak in tension, for your ductile material, they are weak in your shear. So we will talk about a theory uh, which will consider your shear stress for the ductile materials. So for ductile materials, the shear stress theory is used since they are weak in your uh, uh, in the shear scenario. So this Tresca says that whenever the shear stress in the component become greater than or equal to your material shear stress coming coming from your simple tension test, then the material will fail. All right. For the ductile material, the component, uh, as I have discussed in the previous slide, that this is roughly at 45 degrees, and for your uh, brittle, it was at roughly at 90 degree in this particular fashion. The equation can be written in this particular fashion, the tau max, whenever it becomes greater than or equal to your, uh, uh, your, uh, your shear stress coming from your tension test, then the material will fail. Tau max, we can calculate it obviously by using, uh, taking average of your maximum principal stress and your minimum principal stress. This can also be written in this particular fashion, cancelling two from each side, needless to mention. It is applicable only for ductile material. I have already talked about this. Uh, since they are weak in shear. Under hydrostatic condition, the shear stress is zero in all planes. The third is that this particular theory give you a, a kind of design which is over safe. Over safe things are quite uh, uneconomic. It definitely gives you a kind of a sense of uh, safety, but they are not economic in nature. From the profit point of view, the companies would like to uh, have a criteria or have like to use a theory which is not, uh, which is just safe and not give you a kind of over safe design. The third is your maximum principal strain theory. So this will theory will consider your principal strain uh, and compare to as, as compared to your uh, principal stress or your uh, shear stress. Everything will remain same. The shear stress, uh, your principal strain is coming from your uh, simple uh, tension test. When it becomes greater than or equal to your uh, uh, strain coming from your tension test, then the material will fail. This is uh, much similar to your previous two theories. The only difference is that here they are using strain instead of your stress and uh, your uh, uh, shear stress. For coming back to your uh, Higgs theory, he has used a total strain energy. So, so the strain energy uh, considers your stress and strain as well. So we all are aware about the concept of strain energy. So strain energy is nothing but uh, energy which is stored in the material due to straining of uh, uh, 
a straining of a material here we can see that we had a component here and if you apply a load f then the material will deform in this particular fashion all right and the strain energy can be uh, or your stress strain can be plotted in this particular fashion then the strain energy will become the area under this curve which is equal to half sigma epsilon and we can also write the strain energy for your three dimensional state which is roughly equals to your uh, this particular equation and whenever the strain energy coming from your three dimensional loading state become greater than or equal to strain energy coming from your uh, simple tension test then the material will fail so this theory considers both uh, sigma and epsilon so this is quite quite advantageous to consider both the quantities so next is your maximum distortion energy theory this is given by von mises so this says that whenever the shear strain energy per unit volume become greater than or equal to your shear strain energy per unit volume coming from uh, at yield point coming from your tensile test then the material will fail the shear strain energy per unit volume can be written in this particular uh, fashion uh, your sigma 1 minus sigma 2 square plus sigma 2 minus sigma 3 square plus sigma 3 minus sigma 1 square divided by 12g these all are your principal uh, stresses all right this is your uh, shear modulus so whenever the shear strain uh, energy do, uh, calculated or found from uh, this particular equation becomes greater than or equal to your shear strain uh, coming uh, at your yield point from the tensile test and the material will uh, fail all right so let's talk about the yield surfaces uh, so yield surface will give you typically a kind of uh, idea so at which particular region uh, your material will fail and which particular region it is safe so for that we will consider two type of uh, stresses sigma a and sigma b here i am not uh, mentioning that which one is uh, greater and which one is positive which one is negative these are just two stresses sigma a and sigma b all right so we will plot your yield stresses for uh, all the theories typically for your renkine for your treskine for your von mises first for your renkine uh, the we have already discussed that this theory says that whenever uh, the fail for the failure to happen the sigma 1 has to be greater than or equal to your sigma y so let us plot your uh, sigma a and sigma b and uh, when the sigma 1 becomes greater than or equal to sigma y then the material will fail the surface will look something like uh, this all right the sigma 1 uh, uh, let, let's suppose that becomes equal to sigma y all right so this will give you uh, this particular direction uh, you can plot the curve and similarly for sigma 3 becomes greater than equal to sigma y let us just suppose that it is equal to sigma y then we can plot it something like this then the area which is common here is that in this particular region so this is qu quite a safe design and here outside which is outside this particular uh, region then it will be said to be a unsafe design all right let me rub this all these things uh, similarly we can plot your uh, yield surface for other two uh, your theories for your tresca uh, the sigma 1 minus sigma 3 is equal to sigma y so <clears throat> for the first quadrant your sigma 1 and sigma 3 both are positive so we can similarly we can plot this particular uh, uh, your uh, stress surface for the second quadrant your sigma 3 becomes uh, negative so it will keep on reducing uh, this particular quantity all right so it will appear in this particular fashion all right so similarly for your third quadrant as well it will can we can plot it and in this particular quadrant as well we can plot something which is we, ha we had obtained in this particular quadrant all right so this is a kind of a hexagon all right so let me just rub it and i'll replot it so this becomes something like this so we can discuss this for your uh, other theory as well for the one masses sigma one minus square minus sigma one dot sigma two plus sigma one square equal to sigma y square so this is your nothing but an equation of ellipse so when we will plot this this becomes something like this so we can see that uh, the one message stress is quite a considerate uh, theory which uh, considers your uh, tresca so as well and at some regions some critical points these are touching these boundaries but they are uh, small regions which is uh, kind of over safe here compared to your uh, tresca so but still this is they both are quite similar in nature 
all right uh, so if you have any questions you can uh, uh, send an email to me or put it in a comment section thank you so much for listening